Hey guys, welcome back to Ski Me with Schwartz. Today we're going to finish up on inside zone and we're going to talk about the easiest way to run inside zone, which is running it weak to the bubble. We'll get two double teams and we'll talk about how to run this at a base and how to run this at a nickel. It's the best and most efficient way to run inside zone. Hope you guys enjoy this one. So the reason why I like running this play weak as opposed to strong uh, is because you have two guaranteed double teams when you run the ball weak. So we're running the ball to the left in this situation. We talked about running the ball right in the first couple of videos. You're guaranteed one double team and two double teams. And here you could possibly have one here depending on alignment. Versus if you run it strong, you really have one guaranteed double team and there's a lot of variables right here. It's a lot easier to just run it weak. And that's with a tight end or without a tight end uh, weak. So this is kind of a base personnel look right here, obviously against a 4-3 team. And you're running the ball to the bubble as well. There's a lot of space in here to end up running the ball. So we'll start right here with this block. Obviously, the U will have to base this guy right here, but he gets help from the left tackle. It's important on all these double teams right here, especially these two on the front side of the play, to not take your backside arm or shoulder into the double teams. You don't want to have this arm over here turn this way into the double team, because then your shoulder is closed off if your linebacker hits it. So, we, of course, we'll start with a, always a mic point right here, because the tight end is in here right here, the center can work one over and, and ID the true Mike because he knows these guys have this guy. So with, with his double team right here, shoulder into him or hand on the left shoulder. Don't put your right shoulder in there at all uh, because you know the will's going to come here because it's inside zone. The ball will end up winding back. So you want to make sure you don't go too far and come block this guy. The block right here on this double team really depends on where this tackle lines up. If he lines up on the center as he is right here, then it is a firm double team with both guys taking this, this guy off the ball right here to the mic. Remember on double teams, you want to carry the defensive lineman up to the linebacker because if you come, if the mic shows, let's say right here, and this guard comes off early and the back takes it back side, the mic will just pop back here and be unblocked. So you really want to be patient with your double teams. It can be really, really thick double team because of his alignment on the center. If he moves over to play on the guard right here, the center has the same block that the left tackle does. The guard's going to come in here like this. The center has to make sure to use his left shoulder, left arm, but keep his right arm, this backside arm, free in case the mic comes and hits it right now. You want to be able to get off. If you turn it all, if you turn your body at all, you'll end up turning your body if you use your backside arm like this. Your shoulders will be this direction right here. You will not get to that linebacker if he hits it right there. So, again, if he's off the, 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 off the center, you can still get a piece of him, but you want to stay square and work up to the mic linebacker because he can go anywhere. On this double team right here, this is a thick double team right here. Not as much going on right here. The, the right guard goes left foot, right foot. This guy can gallop in here or just drive block this guy right here. This block, the thickness of the guard, how long the guard will stay on the D-tackle and how much of a piece he gets on him depends where their linebacker lines up. If he's way back here, the guard can stay on this as long as he wants. If the Sam cheats a little bit right here or is going to hit it, the guard then has to come off quicker, get a good piece of the D-tackle and come off sooner. Uh, so this is the way you run it with this tight end right here. I'm going to go into running it out of a nickel formation. It's a way better setup, and we'll do that right now. So this is the way the base nickel run will be in the inside zone. The easiest way to run it, and the way most teams will align with a nice four down front and two linebackers. Even three four teams will line up like this in nickel. So you, you take that U tight end that was right here, you take him off, and you make him a third wide receiver. So that third wide receiver can line up right here, and you would have a nickel over here. You line up over here, you have a nickel over here. It ends up still being weak because you're running away from that wide tight end. So the same principles apply here with, with, with your double team. Double team here, double team here. But your angles are way better because the linebackers are a little bit front side. So you can get this guy kind of going on this angle right here, going on this angle right here, and the back then has multiple spots where you can hit it along the line. So the same rules apply, though, uh, with, with the thickness Really on the back side, the thickness rule applies right here because the backer might be pushed a little bit. So on this double team, this B block right here, the guard might have to come off earlier depending on where this linebacker is because this linebacker has that gap right there. So that, that's a really only big deal on the back side of this play with the offensive line. We'll get to the wide tight end in a second. On the front side, though, the thickness of, uh, um, excuse me, the alignment of this D-tackle does not matter as much. These two guys are going to double this guy up to here, if he lines up on the guard or not on the guard. So they're gonna double him up to here, and most often the, um, the actual, the center will get off on this because the back will most often wind it back here. So it's important on this play for the guard not to get too happy and come off early. 
and then the, the, this backer will come back here. So it's important to really drive this double team off the ball, and the center will more often than not get off when the linebacker comes back this way, if the back keeps it there. If the back keeps it front side right here, if the tackle is a good job reaching this, and then, of course, the guard will give off. The issues you run into on the front side all happen with this defensive end right here. So let's just erase this right here. If, if the alignment of the, the tackle is on the center right here, this guard has a choice uh, to, to do. Most often, he's going to double team with the center. If this end spikes and you have a double team call between these two, they, these two have this guy right here and the, the, the tackle has to block that guy. But if you think that this backer is cheating it all out here and the end can spike, you can double team. The tackle can make this call, you can double team right here up to the linebacker. It's really important on this double team though that the tackle brings the defensive end to the guard. If the tackle runs out here on the double team, crosses over, then the, the end can split it right here. So it's important for that tackle to really take that defensive end to that guard. Where the issues arise on that type of situation is if the guard has a two eye on him. If the guard has a two eye one up on him, it is hard for the guard to then help the tackle. So in this scenario, we're to come out here like this and the end was coming inside, there would be no need to bring the guard right here. And the reason why is if the guard comes off this real fast like this, this two eye will come up the field and penetrate on the center's block. So the two eye, that changes what the, the tackle can call if the end is going to come inside. If there's a two eye, and most often with a two eye, the end is not coming inside. But if he does, the tackle then has to, to block him right here uh, to allow this double team on the two eye to come up to linebacker. Remember, the back can hit it anywhere, so these, are, these backside blocks are important. And the most important one, like I mentioned, uh, on base really ends up being this, this block right here, but also what the Y does on the defensive end. The Y has this defensive end right here. Uh, if this block becomes too much of a hassle, if this DN keeps coming in here, there's many ways you can solve it. One of the ways is moving the Y off the ball. You move the Y right here, it's got a better angle to block the defensive end. You can have the Y on this side. You can slide the Y back across to block the defensive end. Uh, and you want to stay up, you want to, you can stay, you can cut them, but you want to stay up more because it's inside zone, but it depends what the tight end wants to do. You can put the Y offset right here to come block them. Uh, you can short motion the Y to come block them. You can short motion the Y and then have him fake like he's running a boot just to hold that DN for just a second. The back has to do a good, the quarterback has to do a good job of, of selling. So there's many different ways to handle this guy right here and this guy right here, but on this block, these happen to be uh, the most important blocks because the back will end up winding it back. Because look at this huge hole right here. If these guys move this guy off the ball, if he does a decent job right here, I mean, there's so much room to run that ball right through here or to pour that ball right through here. So that's why this, end, this play ends up coming um, back to the back side. And, of course, that depends a lot on where the safety is going to be. If the safety drops down right here, then a seven-man box, you're going to end up checking this with a six-man run. Uh, and you know you can you can throw a pass or do anything you want like that, but typically if it's a nice easy box like this, these two blocks on the backside tend to be the most important. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation on Inside Zone Week. We'll get into some adjustments for Inside Zone and how to run this against a three-four defense. Pretty simple, but there's some cool adjustments you can make. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your comments. Take care.